Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. So this weekend I worked the gun show. Because uh, I've, I've been that guy that's been helping go rogue industries. And I, I actually found something really cool this weekend. Uh, one of two guns that I have to have before I die. Um, I got one. But what I have to do is I basically got to work gun shows, work a lot of side jobs to pay for this thing. Um, it's a layaway thing, so I have a long time to pay for it whenever is clever because I have cool friends like that. But <clears throat> it's been increasingly in, uh, obvious lately when going to gun shows or going to anything that's 2A related, including the rallies that I've been to, that we have a problem in the 2A that we're not actually talking about. And the problem is, is age. So the average person that goes to a gun show is, I would say, 50 to 75 easy. And the people running the show, there are younger people, Gen Xers like myself, but by and large, they're also older. Now, why is that a problem? Well, without younger people in our culture, in our sport, it's going to die out. Now, I'm curious if it was more so just that gun shows are a boomer thing and that um, newer generations, younger generations know they can just go to a gun store or can buy online. And they don't like going to such things as shows like gun shows. They'd rather go to comic cons or cons or video game cons or any other type of con. Maybe that's the thing. But it was welcoming to see a few kids. At the same time, it was kind of scary to see the average person who was a customer at our booth or was in the show itself was, you know, a boomer, an older person. Now, there's nothing wrong with the, that. I mean, it's just that, like I said, if we don't address this now, we're going to have an issue later on. Um, we, What are we doing to advocate for our Second Amendment? How are we mentoring kids to get into the Second Amendment, to get shooting? You know, video games are a big driver of gun sales, believe it or not, and that's why gun manufacturers do their best to get into these uh, video games and video game programmers do a lot um, and designers do a lot to try to make the guns look as realistic as possible for a lot of these newer video games and I've covered video games and you know video game guns specifically but the, it's kind of scary when you go to a gun show and you see people that are older than yourself one which I'm kind of used to seeing it you know, most things. But going to the rallies, going to gun shows, and seeing that the average age is in their 50s, 60s, late 60s, where is the future of the Second Amendment? Now, I apologize for posting this so late in the day. I was actually thinking about this for the whole weekend as I worked the gun show. And yesterday, after breaking down the booth and moving it, I just didn't feel like getting up to do stuff for the New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. But I also decided that, you know, since it's President's Day, that I would definitely would get something up because I had the day off because I work in that kind of field where I get these kind of weird holidays off. But I was thinking about this a lot. Now, what else has been going on? In the roundhouse. So we need to do a final roundhouse update because it is over. The session is over. Um, the only one we need to worry about, only bill we need to worry about, I believe, is called House Bill 129. It's the seven-day wait for firearms. Uh, we've had waits in New Mexico. This will do nothing to curb uh, gun uh, gun crime or crime in general in New Mexico. The governor has already said that she's trying to do a special session. Um, she tried to do that last year and was summarily dealt with by her... Um, lieutenant governor who the lieutenant governor I guess is the president of the roundhouse uh, of the senate in the roundhouse or the house in the New Mexico's political system anyway the problem is they have no appetite for it and they're pissed off at our governor 
for trying to push down some of these unconstitu unconstitutional edicts and wasting time knowing that there's statute that says you can't do this. One of the bills, uh, House Bill uh, 137, was trying to ban some automatics, but it also was a gun registration bill. And registration is illegal uh, by, by statute, but yet it seems to get through. Um, these bills seem to keep trying to push this. And why is that concerning? Is looking at the historical precedent of any country that has ever had a gun registry. You know, let's look at our own country. Our country quit, didn't allow registration because of how it was founded. Um, the king, King George, wanted to come here and take our guns away from us, and we told him no. And that started our civil, or not our civil war, our war of independence. If you look at Nazi Germany, Nazi Germany, uh, first thing they did was instigate a registration when the Nazis came to power. Then they removed guns from private citizens. All in the name of peace and prosperity. Look how that worked out for the German people. Look how that worked out for the Jews. The communists, whether it's Pol Pot, whether it's Stalin, whether it's uh, Mao, they all banned guns before they started doing the evil, bad things that they're doing. Now, what do we do about this? You know, that comes back to the circle of where I was going with this. The logic of us having younger people in the Second Amendment is so that they understand the history of what is going on. You know, if we do not preserve our history, if we don't absolutely keep this as something sacred for the American people, what you're going to see is kids backing away from it. If you've noticed, kids are more okay with censorship because they've lived under censorship for years now. So they're okay with, hey, you can't say that. Where the rest of us, us older generations, are saying, that's not okay. That's not how this country was ever meant to be. Whether you're right or wrong, you should be able to speak your mind. And the second and the first are kind of tied together, in my opinion, and the reason why they are is because you can't have one without the other. If you do not have a Second Amendment, a right to defend yourself, a right to defend your people, you don't have a way to stand up to the government. And after the COVID stuff, but also more so just looking at what our country has done to itself, what our government has done to itself. I am less inclined to give them any more power. And I'm more inclined to keep that power where it needs to go. I'm not the only one thinking this same thought, though. That if we don't start helping our younger generation see the importance of voting, of keeping their rights they're going to take them and they're not going to balk at it because if they get free stuff why would they care and that's concerning have we raised a generation of people that is is perfectly fine being subject to the parents to the government you know have we raised a group of people that won't speak their mind and speak up against something that is not correct and not right is the wisdom of the crowd the only thing that rules our country anymore that we need to ask ourselves we need to do some hard soul searching because as I watch these older people come in and out and I'm thankful for seeing them and I like seeing them it makes me think re and reflect why are we not seeing kids because I know I've raised my kids to shoot like, share, subscribe, most importantly, be great.